I did not expect this King Bolan K7 to be anything special. Like the French would say, au contraire. I was expecting it to be a cheap and nasty diagnostic scanner, but it turns out that you know how things go. You need to watch the video until the end to find out. Hello everyone, I am Bogdan. I'm helping people upgrade their vehicles and in this video we are going to take a detailed look at the King Bolan K7 diagnostic scanner. It is a product that promises a lot of functionality, but we will see that or we will see if it is actually able to deliver. It should be able to offer us OEM standards, uh, all system diagnosis, ECU coding, ECU programming, bidirectional control, which means actuator testing, a lot of special functions, three years of free updates, and all of this at an affordable price. Okay, let's put it to the test. A bit of history regarding the brand, King Bolan as a company exists since 2010. I've done some digging, I've done some research. They mainly focus on selling diagnostic tools and the logistics of taking the diagnostic tool and delivering it to the customer. And apparently they are one of the biggest retailers for launch and hotel. And the majority of products that are sold online are sold by them. Recently, they have developed their own diagnostic tools with their name and with their branding. And this means that they are a company that is here to stay. They're not just a guy with a YouTube channel that decided to rebrand some diagnostic tools and sell them on Amazon. Mm. One day I should do just that. Let's discuss a bit the specs. This unit is a 7 inch unit with a 7 inch screen. It has a 4 core 1.8 GHz CPU, 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage. It is running Android 10. It has a 3150 mAh battery. Don't panic just yet, you will see later why. It is featuring a USB C port for charging and communication, a USB A port for accessories like an endoscope and whatever other things you want to add to it. It gives a wide range of coverage. It doesn't feature CANFD and DOIP, but later you will see me testing it on a G30 and apparently it works even without these standards on a 2017 vehicle. It has the FSC mumbo jumbo for some of the newer vehicles and overall as a package, it is addressed to the entry level automotive enthusiast and it is giving the other brands a run for their money. We know the specs, let's discuss a little bit what this unit is capable of actually doing on your vehicles. I've tested it on the BMW F10, on the BMW G30 2017, I've tested it on an old Honda Accord 2006 and I tested it on a Golf 7 2016. The main things that I was looking at were the diagnostic capability the data logging capability, some of the servicing functions, and what other bits and bobs you're able to do with these ones. This unit itself is able to do all of those four main functions, but also it features kind of a secret uh, capability of doing mileage correction, which some people might actually need or actually use the list of vehicles on which it is able to do it is a bit restrictive. It is able to do the VAGs, Volkswagen, Audi, Seat and Skoda. It is able to do Nissan, a few of them, MG, some American cars, GM, Chrysler and Jeep, if I've seen it correctly. But you need to actually test it because I'm not expecting it to work on all the range of vehicles. Testing, actual testing, Honda Accords, all the scanning went according to plan, consistent with the other diagnostic tools that I've tested. And I will be comparing it from time to time with the um, Launch X431 Elite, which I'm thinking that shares some of the software and some of the functionality. For some reason, the software between Launch and this unit is very similar. They might be using the software and collaborating with the brands that they have been selling. So they might be working closely with Launch and Hotel to get the capability on these tools. 
we go and we look at the BMW F10. Basic diagnostics works flawlessly, data logging, absolutely no problem. There were some hiccups with regards to the central information display, which doesn't exist on my vehicle anymore, but the unit sees it uh, in the diagnostics. The same problem is on the launch, so I wouldn't put too much uh, leverage or I wouldn't focus too much on that. I've tested the coding and ECU programming capabilities. This unit knows about the level of the software of the vehicle and it's similar to certain extents to ESIS. And it's quite nice because before allowing you to actually program something, it asks you to perform a backup to save the previous coding so that if something goes wrong, you can re-upload the old file. And it's giving you freedom to change things, but not too many things. In a later video, I might test this and actually see the things that we are able to do with the fail safe of having ESIS to actually see what this unit is, uh, is capable of doing. They are allowing you to do retrofits, which is interesting. The retrofit part of the software, I'm expecting it to work on the vehicle order that the vehicle has stored. It will be interesting to see if it is actually programming the other ECUs in the vehicle. So FA video coding for the people that are familiar with what is happening on the Audi. Took the unit, done the data logging. Data logging is basic by comparison to uh, the X tool. And also I've noticed that if I'm bringing up too many data streams, at four data streams at one time, the refresh rate becomes sluggish. If I'm focusing only on one data stream, things are getting are becoming a little bit better and the information is more useful. Couldn't find a way of exporting that information as a CSV. So this unit will not be your best bet if you want to do data logging. Uh, I've discussed ECU coding, diagnostics, the G30, the newest vehicle, that I've tested with this diagnostic tool. Many people are saying that one will have DOIP, CANFD, all the fancy stuff. This unit, although not advertised that having those bits, was able to scan all the system. I've compared it in parallel with the BMW genuine diagnosis and I've looked at the reports. This one was not able to read the MBT EVO, so the media unit. However, all the other DTCs have been read correctly by this, which makes it a decent uh, option in my opinion. So engine and the main things you will be able to work on. I couldn't actually test the ECU programming that much on that vehicle. Later, if I have the chance, I will focus a little bit more on, um, on the G30 and see if coding is available for that vehicle. On the Volkswagen, everything went according to plan. It scanned the vehicle. What I would say if I really want to be picky, it doesn't give you in the report the status of a DTC in the sense that if it is present, intermittent, or it's a history DTC. But it's quite a good starting point for your own diagnosis if you want to go on that route. What else to expect? As a diagnostic tool, it will be able to provide electronic parking brake functions, it will be able to provide fuel bleeding functionalities, all the main things that you will need when you're doing the own when you're doing your own work on your vehicle. Although they're not advertising 200, 300 servicing functions, the main things, the basic things are available as a servicing function. However, you will have additional functionality once you're reading the ECU, once you're reading the vehicle in the menu that is shown once you have connected to that vehicle. We know roughly the good parts. Let's discuss some of the things that don't really uh, are in the favor of this diagnostic tool. On the negative side of the things, the lack of the CANFD and of the DOIP might be something that limits this diagnostic tool for the newer vehicles, but overall as a package, we are searching for reasons to find something that doesn't work. If we focus on the good bits, the pricing is quite appealing. The quality of the screen is something that you need to test to actually um, enjoy. 
the user interface it is specifically designed for these guys you don't have access to the android side of things but it makes it really really optimized very similar to an iphone and although the the battery capacity is small in my testing the use of the battery is quite efficient quite effective in just standby it lost five percent charge in eight hours and also in my testing i've placed a video to run in the background and it roughly was losing 10 percent per hour which makes it a much much better unit if i'm just comparing it with the x tool d7w's which are going through the batteries like there's no tomorrow pricing and where to buy them these diagnostic tools will be available on your normal shopping platform so amazon ebay aliexpress if you want it really really fast amazon is your best bet make sure on amazon that you click the discount codes when they are available they make quite a big difference in the pricing ebay is the intermediate the the guy in the middle and aliexpress will have the lowest prices but aliexpress is the place where you're taking on more risk and the time frame sometimes it's a little bit much uh, bigger than on amazon so uh, if you want to support the channel links will be in the description if you're buying a diagnostic tool using our referral links small commission might help us keep the lights on in the studio and record videos like this when it comes to deciding if this diagnostic tool is right for you you will need to also figure out your usage scenario in my opinion this diagnostic tool is very capable even for uh, the professionals but at the same time it is a very good strong starting point for all enthusiasts quality and stability of the software they are making it a tool that actually allows you to trust it when you want to do work on some vehicles knowing that you're actually getting the result that you are expecting this opinion of mine is based on me actually testing uh, the um, launch products and that similarity that, that i was discussing regarding launch and the software might uh, be uh, quite consistent now if you enjoy this video you might also want to see a video over here regarding these diagnostic tools or their competitors alternatively you can look at our diagnostic database that will be in the description thank you for watching and see you in the next one